Hi there, this is Alana, your customer success manager here at Content. In today's video, I will be going over our self-service onboarding flow. If you already created your account, verified your email, once you log in with those new login credentials, this is the first page that you're gonna land on from your onboarding experience. It's basically just asking you to select one of the roles that applies to what you do in your organization. You can choose from I'm a technology leader to I am responsible for compliance or security, or none of these apply to me, but you still wanna use Trust Cloud. I'm gonna go ahead and select I am responsible for compliance or security and hit proceed. Next, you're gonna see uh, Kira introducing herself. She's your onboarding guide, as well as post onboarding. You'll see her in the product, just giving you little helpful tips and tricks of information. I'm gonna go ahead and click proceed. Next, Kira is just letting you know what to expect from this onboarding. This onboarding is broken down into three simple steps. The first one is tell me about your company. My company's name is Aloha. The second is describe your tech stack. And the third and final step is creating your SOC 2 scope. Now, there are three main value takeaways that Kira um, highlights at the bottom. First is after your onboarding is complete, you will have a complete SOC 2 program, a plan and budget, and sales enablement tools, which I'll get into uh, once we're wrapped up with the onboarding. I'm gonna go ahead and click proceed. So the first step is tell me about your company, which is essentially just uh, answering a few simple questions to help us establish a baseline and under understand your gaps better. So the first question is, is security awareness training provided to employees on a recurring basis? I'm gonna put yes. When terminating an employee or contractor, do you follow a documented process that includes a termination checklist? I'm gonna put not sure. Are security incidents recorded and tracked? I'm gonna put not sure. And are access requests logged and explicitly approved by the respective system owners? I'm gonna put no. Again, it's okay to answer not sure or no. It just helps us understand your business and build that baseline for you. Moving on to describing your tech stack. The first page on here is asking you to list out or select your cloud providers. So who are you using for your cloud infrastructure? I'm gonna select AWS and Microsoft. If for some reason your cloud provider is not listed on here, just opt for it, I don't use any of these. Moving on to the second page of describing your tech stack. Now it's specifically asking you to describe any AWS or Azure services, or in your case, you know, any cloud services that you use, just depending on which cloud providers you selected on the previous page. So I'm gonna go through this list. You can drag and drop any of these um, cloud services. You can also use the little plus sign here to add these as well. And once it looks good, just go ahead and proceed to the next step. So now that you've um, already put all of your cloud providers, it's turn to put the rest of your um, services or tools that you use. So essentially bringing in your entire tech stack. There's gonna be a few sections on here just to jog your memory with some common systems that we see used by our customer base, but you can always search for any that might not be on there and then just add them straight from our catalog, as you can see. So what do we use for communication, collaboration? I'm gonna put Gmail, Teams, Slack, Zoom, um, Opta AD, Google Auth, for HR, let me see, Bamboo, Greenhouse, QuickBooks, Arda, for training and security, for product development, and logging and monitoring. Again, these are just a few sections with 
systems to jog your memory, but I recommend going and tightening anything that you might have missed. So if you have a list of all of your systems, I would pull that up side by side. Make sure that you have brought everything in. After that, we are moving on to the third step of your onboarding process, which is defining your SOC 2 scope. Um, essentially, what Kira is letting you know here is that you should, um, in order to define your SOC 2 scope, you'll need to identify the systems from your tech stack that store or process really important data. We've already suggested which systems out of your tech stack might be the ones that should go on the right hand side, but you can always drag some of these back if you feel like they do not store or process any important or sensitive data. So I'm going to drag some of these back. And of course, you can add additional systems on here. If you have any questions on what systems you should categorize as storing or processing important data, I definitely recommend checking out our knowledge article on defining your scope. That does a really nice job of explaining the different types of systems that would be categorized in this high tier sensitivity. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click finish onboarding. And there we go. So we are done with the onboarding now Kira is just letting you know what's available to you so you have 83 controls ready to go map to SOC 2 um, 18 policies that are auto generated for you that again are mapped to SOC 2 and 166 tests that are available for automation so next up is turning on trust stops and beginning my SOC 2 prep TrustOps is our compliance automation and audit readiness tool. Um, and then Kira is just letting you know that you're going to have three main things uh, post onboarding that you should focus on in order to be successful with Trust Cloud. So the first is reviewing your SOC 2 scope, then automating your program, and enabling your sales team with Trust Share. Let's start using TrustOps. As you can see, you have those three main buckets at the top here. And then there's going to be some tasks for each one that you should review below. So the first task is view policies. This is just letting you know that you have these 18 policies that are auto generated for you. So you can click into any policy, make sure to review the text on here, make any edits where necessary, and then start approving these. If you are not the owner of this policy, then you can assign this out to the correct person and they will receive tasks to review and approve these policies. Going back to tasks, as you can see, it already cleared the view policies task. The next, the next task is viewing your controls. So here you can look at that list of 83 controls, some of which are already failing. So you can start to look at why this is failing and put in a process to remediate this. And you can get an idea of everything that you'll need to implement or provide evidence for. Um, something to know is that our controls are part of a common control framework. So um, what that means is that they don't just map to one um, standard, they map to multiple. So the idea is that you're doing the work once and you're doing it across many. Um, another synonym of common control framework is standard agnostic. But if you are going to work out of this controls page, since it is pretty overwhelming at times, I recommend leveraging all of our filters here. In any case, you will have tasks for all of these controls. So you don't need to concern yourself with that yet. Going back to the task page on here, the last task for reviewing your scope is reviewing your cloud services. So. This is looking at your systems register, which was created automatically for you based off of that onboarding flow. So all of those important systems that we identified as part of your scope are going to be in customer confidential data sensitivity, which essentially is, you know, any systems that are storing or processing customer confidential or customer sensitive data, uh, production data as well. 
Then there is company restricted, which is company sensitive data that you only want to restrict to a select few people or a select few groups within your organization. Examples of this could be HR records or source code. And then there's company confidential, which is just, you know, company proprietary data, but it's less sensitive. So things that most people will have access to, if not everybody. And then the fourth um, definition that is not on here because we did not select any public systems is public. So anything like your website that is available or open source to the entire world, essentially. If you have any questions on these definitions, again, I definitely recommend checking out our Defining Your Scope where you can see a uh, classification key on the different sensitivities at the top here. Keep in mind, you can make changes, so you can drag and drop these into the correct data sensitivities. Um, you can also remove any systems that were incorrectly added. And if you miss any systems from our onboarding, then you can either add them by searching the catalog here. We have a pretty extensive catalog. And if you don't see your system here, you could just opt for, I don't see my system here, to log a catalog request. Um, additionally, you may want to bring in your self-authored or, you know, software developed systems that you've developed in-house, like your front end, back end, things like that. It'll ask you questions on platforms and whatnot, and you'll need to classify this as well. Um, so going back to the task here, we've essentially completed everything for reviewing your SOC 2 scope. The next step, and probably the most important or exciting step, is automating your program. So now that you have all of these controls, policies, systems, you want to be able to automate as much as possible. Not only is it you know going to make your life easier, save your team time, but it's also going to be more accurate than doing this in a manual fashion. So it's already suggesting that you can set up a couple of integrations on here. So if you click on setup, it's just going to take you to that integration page for that specific vendor. Usually it's just a few simple steps and there's a guide that you can read to get more information on this integration. You can test it. If the test is successful, then you should be able to successfully connect this integration. Anything that you see at the top of the integrations page are integrations that we've identified as being available for your environment. So any systems that we uh, were able to log as being available for integrations will filter at the top. Anything else at the bottom are kind of like the rolling list of all of our integrations. So if you do have one of these and it just is not filtered at the top, make sure that you go to your systems page and add that system before setting up the integration. Going back to that task page, you'll just repeat that um, integration setup a couple of times. And then the third step, which is previewing my trust share. So trust share is our application that is essentially a customer or prospect trust and security portal where you can share with your external stakeholders everything that you're doing as far as security and compliance. And this comes ready out of the box, but you have the ability to customize it manage um, and restrict access, invite people in. But the first place that it'll take you is a preview of that trust share page. And it's prompting you, hey, you're probably gonna wanna customize this. Um, all of the policies though that you see on here are those policies that have been auto-generated for you, which is why we urge you to review these and approve these as quickly as possible. And then all of those controls um, with little green Icon showing that these are continuously tested. If you click on any of these controls, it'll give you know the customer some insights into what it's mapped to and uh, the control statements, things like that. So very, very cool things. And you can add more documents on here besides your policies, like maybe your SOC 2 report, pen test, and put this under request access. But before you start using this, we want it to be tailored and branded with your company's you know, logo and colors. So I definitely urge you to click on that customize button. 
It'll take you to a few onboarding steps where you can add your logo on here. Then you can add some content on your homepage, edit any text that is on there. Um, and then you can preview any changes before publishing. Anything that you do under preview is not going to be pushed to production until you hit that publish button. And until you publish this trust share, you won't be able to invite people in. It'll just be a staging page. Um, before you publish though, very important to go to manage my trust share and add a contact email to receive any access requests because you can either invite users or they can request access from your public facing trust share. That said, there is private versions of trust share as well as data rooms. So if you're interested in learning more about private and data rooms, I definitely recommend on checking out our video on trust share admin portal. Uh, we also have a knowledge article on flight school as well. But that is essentially it for your onboarding. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact support or kira at content.com. Thank you.